Thank you very much, Rith. I'm joined here by Monty and Kobe to break down that game two as it is all square in the series, EDG versus SKT. And while um, commemorable effort, that was not the right word, was it? From SKT fighting back in that game after what happened in the beginning. But on the other side, EDG doing a very good job driving it home, yet it turned out to be pretty close, which is very good by SKT. Yeah, I mean, what are you going to do after you get the, give up those three kills at level one? And if we take a look at the team compositions as well, it's pretty much the worst, right? Because if you're SKT, <laughs> You're looking to abuse Jinx's laning phase with mm -hmm. Illusion. You want that 2v2. And we saw the reverse matchup happening, right? So in the first game, we saw Easy Hoon beat Pawn on Cassiopeia into Ori. And then he beat, even after those kills, the, the Cassiopeia with Orianna himself. So we know his laning phase is going to be quite strong. But with the tier and the weakness of Jinx in the early game, that is the prime time for SKT to take an advantage. But with the early kills coming in, it became so hard to do that. You very rarely expect teams to come back from a level one like that. Yeah. But SKT, with these really extreme map movements in the early game, made a good case for themselves. They pulled themselves back to within striking distance. Yeah, there's SKT right now. And honestly, looking into the next game, they can run the exact same thing. I think their fundamental game plan that time was absolutely solid, but when you fall that far behind, SKT had to trade the Dragons for gold into the form of turrets just to catch up, and that created this snowball with these late-game hyper carries that was pretty unavoidable. I mean, we obviously had that extraordinary Bar Baron steal, which yeah. was unlikely and due to EDG not prepping Baron properly, but from SKT's end, I think they will take those exact same picks and bans if they can get them again. Um, I beg to differ. Maybe EDG coming out with the Anya support pick and the Thresh was still open, yet Wolf went for Leona the That's hard fair. engage. And <laughs> I wasn't fair. really, really impressed. I don't with think that. anyone was impressed with that. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't the best. Um, any other adaptations for EDG then as they is on the other side again? Uh, that Casio very highly contested in their one. For me, it comes down to Pawn's champ pool. Because if he's losing reverse matchups like that, there's a really big problem happening. He's either not, he's, he's not prepared on the champions enough that he's playing, uh, and Easy Hoon is just putting immense pressure out in that lane. So we have to see something more from Pawn, I think. Yeah, definitely. The, the raw DPS that you need out of that lane right now, the Cassiopeia has really risen to the top quite unexpectedly. Yeah, absolutely. And the top lane matchup so far, it was heavily contested in this one as well. Koro coming out with the flashy plays, but I think that it's not enough if we get the same scenario as in one for uh, Koro to carry his team. Uh, possibly. I mean, Koro's been fantastic so far this entire tournament. So we'll have to see. Uh, yeah, his top lane picks I don't think have been the major effort. Marin's been able to uh, stay at least relevant in terms of farm. And in this last game, Marin found ways to play and try and get turrets down and get kills even when he was... Level totally three screwed. and uh, roaming <laughs> mid lane against the summoner list uh, mid laner there. That was a really good move. Uh, great in-game adaptation. The other thing is that there have been also a lot of misplays. We talk about all the good plays, mm -hmm. but there have been multiple flashes when Twisted Advance is already on them. Uh, and so the Maokai still travels yeah. with them. Uh, bang in the level one, flashed into a wall. So there are, <laughs> there's still a, there are still a lot of things to clean up, even with these best teams in the world. Playing. Yeah, and uh, finally, as you were jungling so awesomely on Zinzao beforehand, <laughs> and we talked a lot about Don't the remind me, please. <laughs> we talked a lot about the jungle matchup and the clear love versus Bengi, and maybe the strategy of trying to shut Bengi down. That hasn't happened yet. Do you think that will come out in the next? Uh, what did I didn't catch that. What did you say? Oh, that clear off was saying how the edges of uh, Bengi's champion pool could be a real weakness for SKT in this one, but they haven't tapped into that yet. I was actually really impressed in the game that Bengi did get Gragas. Uh, he had a strong Gragas performance, and I think that's a huge boon for SKT. Yeah, even in this last game, I think he did what he could given the given the scenario. I think Bengi's actually been performing at a pretty admirable level tonight overall, and uh, yeah, clear love in that last game also. Pretty darn good. It's it's There's a, Gragas ultimate with the uh, assisted escape though. Those are hard. To, uh, those are hard to place. Enough. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, in general, we have seen some very clean and, and good League of Legends so far. Let's hope we get the full five games. We're going to take a short break while the team set up for game three. We'll be right back with the midseason Invitational right after this. Happy Mother's Day as we head into game two of the midseason Invitational. That happens. Oh this is my be God! Very bad. There's one passive for him. He's going for more. Easy Hoon could go down now to pawn. Bengi in a bad spot, and now he's in a worse one as he's down on the ground. Marin in depth, face to face. Double kill coming in for depth. Nice alt coming in from Easy Hoon. What chaos Prince. in these fights? Draw says depth, and he takes down Bang. 
as they turn around, they get hit in the back of the head by Pawn. That's going to be the entire team going down. What a game. It's all even here at the Midseason Invitational. One to one.